right in the last lesson uh, that is in lesson 8.2 uh, we discussed about types we discussed about constants and uh, we looked at variable declarations okay so uh, in this lesson the question we're going to answer is what will happen if we have an arithmetic expression let's say a equal to b plus c and a is of int b is of short and c is of character how is this expression going to be evaluated so this question is we're going to answer by looking at a topic called as type conversions so type conversions the golden rule is always the lower type gets promoted to the upper type okay so let's look at what is this when what what is this lower type and upper type okay so in the floating point types right so the float is the lower type and long double is the is the upper type so if there is any expression which has long double everything else gets converted to long double okay so that's the golden rule so the next thing what we're going to look at is integer types so all these are integer types what i and unsigned long end is the upper type so if you have an unsigned long int everything else get converted into unsigned long int so i'm going to uh, delve into this you know go more deeper by explaining with specific examples okay let's have a look at few of the examples here sure so okay for the sake of convenience i'm going to have, i have named the variables like this so when i say uh ld underscore long double it is of type long double and when i say f underscore float is of type float and d underscore double is of type double so by looking at the variable you will know which type it is of okay and is especially very useful to explain things here okay so so here the rule we're going to use is very simple if you have if either of the operand is long double convert the other to long double as simple as that okay next we're going to look at this expression so here we have double so the rule is if you have an if either of the operand is double convert the other to double so here the float and the in types get converted into double and the result gets stored in d underscore double so the next rule is if either of the operand is float convert the other to float so the short gets converted to float okay so the next one we're going to look at integer types now okay so in integer types if either of the operand is int convert the other to int so you know the char and the short gets converted to int okay so, you know it it's it's sort of getting repetitive because you you sort of got the rule convert the lower type to the upper type okay so that's what i'm trying to show you that in any expression okay it's very easy to con perform conversions it's very easy uh now you have an unsigned long here so if any any expression the operand is unsigned long the other operand also gets converted to unsigned long so the int and the short also get converted to unsigned long okay next thing let's say if you have a long if you have a long convert everything else to long that's it okay and now um uh, okay now let's look at a bit more tricky issues so the tricky issue i'm going to look at here is uh this thing let's say we're going to assign a character to an int what happens if for example int is the bigger type and char is the shorter type okay so when you're converting a character to int basically what will happen as the character will get converted to int and nothing will happen nothing will happen for example that character ascii value will get stored in the integer variable but when you are converting an integer to a character when you say c char underscore char equal to i underscore int so what's going to happen is this uh, the integer value will get truncated so the leftmost bits will just get flipped off and whatever uh, you know if the character is one byte only the first the rightmost eight bits will be stored into the character variable so here is when uh, truncation happens and loss of information happens so when you convert an int to a char there is going to be a loss of information because character is uh, 
a smaller type and integer as a bigger type in terms of the bits it can accommodate okay so the next thing i'm going to look at is what happens when you do similar thing with integer and float so when you put put a float into an int this is a bit more trickier i'm going to explain that so if you put a float to an int if you convert a float to an int if that float value you know contains decimals that decimals is going to be truncated and if the float whatever remains is going to be is can be represented in the range of the integer then uh, that it can be represented if it cannot be represented in the range of the integer then the result is undefined that means the c standard itself does not repeat does not define what's going to happen okay so but what is going to happen uh, the other way around let's say when you're going to convert uh, an integer to a float when you convert an integer to a float if the integer uh, uh, you know can be represented in the range of the float again it can it will be represented if it cannot be represented again the result is undefined so this will happen uh, when uh, in time uh, instead of an integer you have a long or an unsigned long and uh, you cannot put the you know the value you have an unsigned long to float that's when this problem will happen okay now i'm going to delve uh, a bit deeper into this type conversions uh, and i'm going to explain what's going to happen uh, between conversions of signed and unsigned that actually will get a bit more complicated so i'm going to explain that too okay so let's say uh, you have an uh, you have a long and you have a signed long and you have an uh, unsigned integer and long is 32 bits okay and unsigned integer is 16 bits now when i say minus 1 l that is minus 1 unsigned minus 1 long i'm comparing a long with unsigned int okay now long is bigger and unsigned int is smaller so what happens is this unsigned int 1 that is in the left part of the sorry the right part of the first expression gets promoted to the long so minus 1 l will be smaller than one unsigned okay but let's consider the second expression what happens is minus one l minus one long and one unsigned long so this minus one l gets converted to unsigned long so this minus one long will be greater than the unsigned long okay so this is what i had to explain about type conversions the sign type conversions get a bit complicated okay so that's okay if you've got a bit of it uh, you'll get the rest in the future lessons okay so that's what i had to say about type conversions okay